In this video, we will explore constellation diagrams, a very useful tool for the analysis of digital communication schemes. We'll start off with a little review of digital communications. In digital communications, our goal is to transmit a series of zeros and ones, but we have to transmit them using analog waveforms. So we change some characteristics of those waveforms in order to encode the individual zeros and ones or combinations of them. And we're, gonna, we're going to focus on two techniques, amplitude shift keying or ASK and phase shift keying or PSK. In ASK, our transmitted signal Y of T is A sub K cosine of omega CT plus some phase. So this is our carrier signal at a frequency of omega sub C and it has some offset, some phase offset, which doesn't really matter, but it has an amplitude that we're going to change in accordance with our actual signal. So for example, A sub K might equal 0 and 1, which means that in order to transmit a 0, we're going to multiply this whole thing by a 0, so it'll just be y of t equals 0. And to transmit a 1, we're going to multiply by a 1, and so therefore this is going to just be our carrier with an amplitude of 1. So to transmit the message 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, we're going to have an amplitude of 0 for our message, our signal, and then amplitude of 1, amplitude of 1, amplitude of 0, then again amplitude of 1, amplitude of 1, and so on, in this kind of a fashion. We can also encode more than one bit at a time. If, for example, our library of A sub K is 0, 1, 2, 3, we have four possible amplitudes that we can assign, and then to transfer the message 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, well, we're going to focus on two bits at a time. So we're going to look at 0, 1. Suppose that these amplitudes correspond to the four combinations of two bits. So this will be for 0, 0. This will be 0, 1. This is 1, 0. This is 1, 1. And therefore, our waveform will look like with a 0, 1, we're going to have an amplitude of 1. So something like this for the duration of these two bits. Then 1, 0 has an amplitude of 2, so it's going to become bigger. Until this point where we have 1, 1, that's an amplitude of 3. So it's going to become bigger yet. So this is what our waveform may look like using this ASK scheme. With PSK, we're going to change the phase of our carrier. So it'll have some fixed amplitude, A sub C, and it'll be cosine of again omega ct the frequency of the carrier doesn't change here but the phase will so that will be phi sub k and as an example we can have that phi sub k is equal to 0 and pi so again we're going to encode just one bit at a time and to transmit the message 0 1 1 0 1 1 let's again say that a zero phase corresponds to bit zero, a pi phase corresponds to bit one, and therefore it'll look something like this. It'll go, and then at one it'll switch phase and go backwards. This is the same one. At this one it'll again flip phase by 180, or pi, and then at a one the other way, and so on. So it'll look something like this for our transmitted message. We can also, of course, take combinations of ASK and PSK and change both the amplitude and the phase of the signal to encode things even more efficiently. This brings us to the concept of constellation diagrams. Now, a constellation diagram is going to show each one of the individual possible Y of T's that we can send on a nice representation where we can then analyze it. So specifically, every point on a constellation diagram, such as this one, corresponds to an entire waveform of the form A cosine omega CT plus phi, where if we look at this in a polar kind of representation, this has a distance from the origin of A and an angle from the positive x-axis of phi. 
And so we can represent every single possible y of t that we had shown above, that we had shown right here, as a point on this constellation diagram. For example, for the first scheme that we had seen with a sub k is equal to 0 and 1, we would have a point here with an amplitude of 0 and over here with 1, with a phase of 0. This shows the entire scheme. These are the two possible y of t's that we can transmit. Our example with PSK, suppose there that the amplitude is going to be 1, but the phase is going to shift by 180 degrees or pi radians, so therefore it would be a point here for an amplitude of 1 phase of 0, and here amplitude 1 phase 180. So this is when phi sub k is equal to 0 and pi, as we had seen up here. So this shows the entire scheme in a nice compact representation. And the whole point is that then we can perform some kind of analysis by using this. So let's look at a slightly more complicated example. Here we're going to look at an 8 PSK scheme. What that means is that we have one fixed amplitude but eight possible phases that our signal can take. So we'll say that this is the amplitude we're interested in and eight phases are going to be equally spaced on here therefore they'll each be 45 degrees apart. So the full scheme looks something like this. Now each one of these points is going to represent an entire y of t so this is going to be 1 times cosine of omega ct plus 45 degrees or pi over 4 if I assume that each one of these is in an amplitude of 1 around a circle. And of course each one of them is also going to represent 3 bits at a time. Since we have 8 possible signals we can represent 3 bits at a time. So this might be corresponding to 0, 0, 0. This is 0, 0, 1 this one over here maybe 1 1 1 and, and so on so we encode all possible combinations of three bits there are eight of them now the way that we're going to use this for analysis is because we know that with digital communications we can only send a finite number of possible signals whereas with analog communications we can send any arbitrary signal here we can really only send a finite number of signals that are defined in the way that we had shown up here so in this case the only possible signals that we can actually send are going to be one of these eight. Therefore, after going through the channel and encountering noise, we may not get exactly one of these signals. There could be some amplitude and phase offset present in the received signal. But we still know that we had to have transmitted one of these signals and therefore we have to map it to the closest one and say that that's what we actually received. Now this brings us to the notion of decision boundaries. So decision boundaries are going to be boundaries in between these symbols which are basically going to be our decision points that help us to choose which point to map to. So for example, this is a decision boundary between this and this symbol that we can send. And we can extend this and show that it's going to be similar for all of these. We're just going to draw it halfway in between them since we drew everything nice and symmetrically. So th these green lines here, these green dashed lines, are our decision boundaries. And the idea is that suppose that we send a 0, 0, 0. That is a cosine with a phase shift of 0 degrees. But what we actually receive maybe something more like this and this right here this is going to have a different amplitude so it looks like a smaller amplitude and a phase offset of maybe something around 20 degrees so this is actually going to be something like cosine or in this case is going to have a smaller amplitude so let's say 0.7 cosine of omega ct plus 20 degrees that's what this point actually corresponds to. That's what we receive. But we know that this is nonsense because we had to have sent one of these eight black dots. So therefore 
since it falls within this segment of the decision boundaries, we say that it must have come from here. And we map it to this and we say that we sent a 0, 0, 0. And in this case, we would be correct. However, if there was more noise in the channel, and perhaps we actually end up receiving this instead, well, that's no longer going to map to 0, 0, 0. That's going to map to 0, 0, 1. And we encounter an error because we interpret the signal as being 0, 0, 1 when instead we had tried to send a 0, 0, 0. Whereas in analog communications, such an error would just corrupt our signal. Here, we get a real error because we no longer get anything near what we try to transmit. Imagine if this had actually gone the other way and instead of a 0, 0, 0, it had actually been interpreted as a 1, 1, 1. This would be a very big mistake. So that's the idea with constellation diagrams, that you can examine these various schemes and look at the decision boundaries and basically be able to tell how much noise can our system suffer before an error occurs. Here, you can see that a phase shift of greater than 22 and a half degrees is going to shift our transmission over the decision boundary and therefore is going to create an error upon transmission. Let's look at another example here and this one is going to be what is termed an 8 qualm scheme and here we are again going to have 8 possible points that is we're able to encode 3 bits at a time QAM means quadrature amplitude modulation and is basically going to be a combination of both amplitude and phase. So we're making more efficient use of our possible space in the constellation diagram. So for this example, I'm going to have two amplitudes, these two possible amplitudes, and four phases. So it might look something like this. And once again, I'm going to say what each one of these is encoding. Let's say this is a 0, 0, 0, and this one is a 0, 0, 1, and so on. Each one of these represents a combination of zeros and ones until we hit all eight of those combinations. The decision boundaries for this are, again, going to be these same kind of lines to separate phases. But the new thing here is that to separate amplitudes, we use circles. So these are the decision boundaries we look at. And so now, let's say, again, we transmit a 0, 0, 0. In order for there to be no error, it must fall within this wedge over here after the transmission. So again, if there is some kind of a noise and we end up receiving something like this, that's OK, because that will still map back to where it's supposed to. But if there is a little bit more noise and we end up over here, then that's actually going to map to something completely different. And so again, you can see, you can analyze how much amplitude noise can this suffer by looking at these boundaries, and also how much phase noise can this suffer by looking at the boundaries. Now something you can readily see from looking at the constellation diagram is that the more signals that you try to pack into the same amount of space, the closer the decision boundaries are going to be and the more likely an error is going to occur. Now, a physical system is going to be limited in the amplitude that it's able to produce. So therefore, if you want to encode, let's say, 5 bits at a time, you're going to have to use 32 possible symbols, 32 possible dots, and you have to pack them into the same exact space as you were using to put these 8 into. And therefore, the decision boundaries are going to be closer to each other than they are here, and therefore, you can have less noise before an error occurs. So again, this is a very useful tool for looking at the various amounts of noise that your system can suffer before you're going to get an actual error. Altogether, we have seen what constellation diagrams are and how to use them to analyze digital communication schemes, and in particular, to see how much noise we can allow before an error occurs.